Welcome to Star Citizen and the Ship Guide. With this extraordinary and at the same time exotic ship, which does not fit directly into the standardized ship classifications, we have at the same time one of the most interesting ships in the verse before us. The Banu Defender. Not only is the appearance of the Defender exotic, but also the equipment, which has a variety of specialties and unique features. So far, the Defender is the only representative of a dedicated Banu ship. Besides the special Xi'an thrusters, the Tavern Shield technology has to be mentioned, as well as the extraordinary standard armament, which is available in the form of the Sinch Tachyon cannons. Consequently, it is not surprising that the Defender was initially classified as a medium fighter after its release, then moved to the light fighter category, but again it is not completely at home in this classification. And to preface our assessment after extensive testing, the Defender would mostly like fit here in the Interceptor category, along with parts of Origin 300 series and similar representatives of that category. But all the peculiarities, advantages and disadvantages, as well as the various purposes we will highlight in detail in this guide. And the question about the origin of the well-known nickname of the Defender, a space crab, I think we can already answer definitely after these pictures. And at the end of the guide, we will see if the Defender really represents the best of all worlds. The Banu Defender is classified in the size small as a light fighter, whereby the dimensions are here in the upper range of this category. Due to the special lightweight shell, the weight is kept within limits. The components are mainly used in the small size, but the Banu Sukuran shield in the medium size offer a unique selling point in the light fighter category. At just under 2.8 million Alpha UEC at Astra Marta in-game or $220 standalone at limited time sales, the Defender is no bargain. The armament with 4 size 3 hardpoints is analogous to the Cutlass Black and offers a plus in firepower on average for light fighters. Missile payload with 4 size 2 is rather in the lower range. A special feature is the dual cockpit, which is completely identical on both sides. Currently, however, a co-pilot offers no advantages in space combat. The outstanding feature is the enormously extended range of the Quantum, which beats even the much longer Cutlass Black series with 2750. The reason for this is that the Defender was designed and developed for the protection of the Banu Merchantman, which will appear in the medium term. But also in the interior there are some differences to human ships. Via the retractable access staircase, we enter an empty-looking main room, which due to the organic design language is rather reminiscent of an alien, from the pen of Hans Rudolf Giger, the creator of the film monster of the same name. There are no other amenities, expect for two mirrored beds, two mirrored cockpits and weapon compartments at the access doors, as well as no possibility to load cargo. Space for transport boxes, however? is more than sufficient. Therefore, the interior seems empty and unfinished. Even through it fits the organic design language and seems coherent. Depending on the selected cockpit, we sit on the left or right side of the ship, whereby the overview here can be described as good, even if the cockpit glazing through its structure rather reminds of, of the surface of a golf ball. After takeoff, the spacecraft turns into a potent and agile fighter, which we of course test in its primary role. With a combat speed of 203 meter per second, as well as a maximum speed of 1200 meter per second, the Defender is compared to most other light fighters, rather in the lower field to find. Here the speed values reflect rather the middle fighter category again. 
With the gimbal Tachyon standard cannon loadout, the Defender achieves a very manageable 1080 DPS. However, due to the four size three hardpoints, analogous damage values of a Cutlass Black with 2465 DPS in a comparison attrition loadout are possible. With our recommended PvE, Neutron and Distortion loadout, we achieve almost 2150 DPS, as well as a high alpha damage with about 630 points. Visually, the Defender offers countless details, ornaments and an up-to-date, yet timeless look in the two different hull variants. The two forward sliding out triggers, to which two of the four weapon points are attached, are considered weak points. If one of them is lost, the flight capability is significantly reduced, as well as a direct negative impact on the firepower. Like other moral decisions, it will have an effect on other people, make them also choose right from wrong. The watchman has made his decision. And maybe it's not only me and also you see an inevitable similarity to the aircraft Archie from the Watchmen filming. And after the use purpose of the Defender by the enormous quantum range, the potentially high firepower as well as the lack of cargo capacity is clearly in the fight, we dedicate ourselves to all available PvE space combat missions. Immediately beforehand, it should be noted that the Tachyon cannons 4 size 2 in the gimbal variant reach their limits already with ships of the Freelancer series, since the generated damage is not sufficient to reliably penetrate these double medium shields and thus ultimately to apply damage against the hull. We can thus spend some time uselessly firing at the Freelancer or even larger opponents, doing no effective damage. Therefore, we strongly recommend that you switch to a loadout that makes at least partial use of distortion weapons. In the test, we used a fixed loadout with two distortion repeaters and two neutron repeaters, each in size 3. This way, you can easily kill enemies like hammerheads. Another special feature of dedicated alien ships is a special quantum animation, which is very well done on the Defender with a green effect and is a welcome change. I hope we see more of these different variants in the future. In terms of missile capacity, with just under 50,000 damage points, we have a very manageable damage potential, which is identical to a starter ship like the Avenger Titan. Therefore, in the area of general damage potential, we are just below a Cutlass Black due to the armament, but mostly above most light fighters. For a medium fighter, however, we have again too little firepower, which makes a direct classification into one of the categories for the Banu Defender really not easy. As far as acceleration, maneuverability and roll rates are concerned, the Defender again finds itself in the medium fighter category, as the majority of light fighters are once again significantly more agile and maneuverable. However, in PvE space combat, the Defender is more forgiving than the Light Fighter due to its medium shield, has potentially high firepower, limited amenities and the ability to use an interior. The beds and the second cockpit also allow you to take a friend with you. The Defender therefore offers an interesting mix of gameplay possibilities where you have the option of a simple multi-crew experience, delivery missions, any PvE space combat missions, as well as more options through the use of the interior. And can therefore use significantly more gameplay mechanics than a simple eye fighter, which for the most part only has a cockpit.
In addition, there are the extraordinary visuals and the future possibility to dock the Banu Defender to a Banu Merchantman, which is to appear in Star Citizen in the medium term. To what extent we will find a docking process similar to that of the Snubfighters of the Constellation series or a regular hangar is not yet known. For our part, however, we assume that it will be a similar docking process to that of the Constellation series. In PvE space combat, the Defender offers significant advantages over light fighters, especially for beginners, as we can use increased defensive capabilities as well as increased firepower, again with respect to light fighters. And in the final PvE test, an extreme risk target mission against an escorted hammerhead, the Defender is agile and nimble enough to dodge fire and deal enough damage to complete this mission type effectively and quickly. Thus, we can fully recommend the Defender for PvE space combat, but due to the high pledge store price, it is worth purchasing the ship in-game. We come to the final part of our guide, the pros and cons as well as the atmospheric flight characteristics of the Banu Defender. Pros, we have a high damage potential, an enormous quantum range, the Sukuran alien shield, two beds, weapon compartments and an interior. The cons are the weak standard loadout, a limited missile capacity, limited maneuverability for a light fighter, a currently useless pilot seat, lots of empty interior space and no cargo capacity. The flight in the atmosphere is intuitive, fast and pleasant with the Defender showing no weaknesses here. Summary: We have here a really strong small spacecraft. I hope you enjoyed the video and leave me a like and maybe even a subscribe here. The Banu Defender is a welcome change from the often interchangeable light fighters. However, the Defender does not fit directly into one of the existing categories, which makes it even more interesting. But of course, I would be interested in your opinions. Is the Defender a light fighter for you? Do you use the Defender? Are there other uses where you prefer the Defender? Feel free to write me in the comments in the Discord or watch at the almost daily Twitch livestreams. And the most important as always at the end, a big thank you to all Patreons, channel members and Twitch subscribers. You are a huge motivation. And without you, the whole thing in this form would not be possible. Thank you for your support guys, you definitely rock. And of course, there will be extensive giveaways again this month, ships, subscriber items and more on YouTube, in the Twitch livestreams, in Discord and again, especially for members. I say goodbye, until next time. See you soon and I say, as always, see you in the verse.